Your Invisible Power by Genevieve Berend. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter One: Order of Visualization. The exercise of the visualizing faculty keeps your mind in order and attracts to you the things you need to make life more enjoyable in an orderly way. If you train yourself in practice of deliberately picturing your desire and carefully examining it, you will soon find that your thought and desires come and proceed in more orderly procession than ever before. Having reached a state of ordered mentality, you are no longer in a constant state of mental hurry. Hurry is fear, and consequently destructive. In other words, when your understanding grasps the power to visualize your heart's desire and hold it with your will, it attracts to you all things requisite to the fulfillment of that picture by the harmonious vibrations of the law of attraction. You realize that since order is heaven's first law, and visualization places things in the natural element, then it must be a heavenly thing to visualize. Everyone visualizes, whether they know it or not. Visualizing is the great secret of success. The conscious use of this great power attracts to you greatly multiplied resources, intensifies your wisdom, and enables you to make use of advantages which you formerly failed to recognize. We now fly through the air, not because anyone has been able to change the laws of nature, but because the inventor of the flying machine learned how to apply nature's laws, and by making orderly use of them produced the desired result. So far as natural forces are concerned, nothing has changed since the beginning. There were no airplanes in the year one, because those of that generation could not conceive the idea as a practical working possibility. It has not yet been done, was the argument, and it cannot be done. Yet the laws and materials for practical flying machines existed then as now. Troward tells us that the great lesson he learned from the airplane and wireless telegraphy is the triumph of principle over precedent, and the working of an idea to its logical conclusion in spite of accumulated testimony of all past experience. With such an example before you, can you not realize that still greater secrets may be disclosed? Also, that you hold the key within yourself with which to unlock the secret chamber that contains your heart's desire. All that is necessary in order that you may use this key and make your life exactly what you wish it to be is a careful inquiry into the unseen causes which stand back of every external and visible condition. Then bring these unseen causes into harmony with your conception, and you will find that you can make practical working realities of possibilities which at present seem but fantastic dreams. We all know that the balloon was the forefather of the airplane. In 1766, Henry Cavendish, an English nobleman, proved that hydrogen gas was seven times lighter than atmospheric air. From that discovery, the balloon came into existence, and from the ordinary balloon, the dirigible, a cigar-shaped airship, was evolved. Study of aeronautics and the laws of aerial locomotion of birds and projectiles led to the belief that mechanism could be evolved by which heavier-than-air machines could be made to travel from place to place, and remain in the air by the maintenance of great speed which would overcome by propulsive force the ordinary law of gravitation. Professor Langley of Washington, who developed much of the theory which others afterwards improved, was subjected to much derision when he sent a model airplane up, only to have it bury its nose in the muddy waters of the Potomac. But the Wright brothers, who experimented in the latter part of the 19th century, realized the possibility of traveling through the air in a machine that had no gas bag. They saw themselves enjoying this mode of transportation with great facility. It is said that one of the brothers would tell the other, when their varied experiments did not turn out as they expected, It's all right, brother. I can see myself riding in that machine, and it travels easily and steadily. Those Wright brothers knew what they wanted, and kept their pictures constantly before them. In visualizing, or making a mental picture, you are not endeavoring to change the laws of nature. You are fulfilling them. Your object in visualizing is to bring things into regular order, both mentally and physically. When you realize that this method of employing the creative power brings your desires, one after another, into practical material accomplishment, your confidence in a mysterious but unfailing law of attraction, which has its central power station in the very heart of your word picture, becomes supreme. Nothing can shake it. 
You never feel that it is necessary to take anything from anybody else. You have learned that asking and seeking, have receiving and finding, is their correlatives. You know that all you have to do is to start the plastic substance of the universe flowing into the thought moulds your picture desire provides. End of chapter 1